Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Fletcher here, studio artist for Tabletop Tactics, and this one is quite a special video for me. Over the last year, I've slowly been painting a Sons of Horus display army, mainly consisting of the Age of Darkness box set released in June 2022. This video will mainly cover how I paint my Sons of Horus scheme, but will also feature a bit of background behind the project and some bonus tutorials, including how I painted Malagurst's face. So, this army was inspired mainly by my trip to Warhammer World with Lawrence for the Horus Heresy Open Day. I got to paint up Ferris Manus for the event and had a really good time hanging out with everyone for the new release of 2nd Edition and some fantastic new kits. The Mark VI Marines in particular caught my eye and I knew I just had to paint up a heresy force for myself. I actually painted one rune up trying to emulate the heavy metal style, which I think turned out okay, but I quickly decided this wasn't the way to go. It just wasn't practical to knock out an army of these time-wise, as I paint so much other stuff already. Plus, I actually prefer the airbrushy, weathered look that the Forge World and Heresy models are known for. There were some other factors that really helped me to complete an army, as well as not committing to relentless edge highlighting. What really allowed me to go on with the project was that I commissioned the box to be built. I do enough of that day to day, so it was great to start painting immediately. I also bought some lovely resin bases, so I wouldn't have to spend time making them. I do love a good base, and the Unreal Wargaming stuff I used is really nice. On screen now is a list of all the paints I'd need to paint a standard marine, tank or dreadnought for my Sons of Horror scheme. And here are the three mixes I used to create the green armour for my Sons of Horus. You can see all the paints I used on the bottle labels and in the next few clips I go through recreating these mixes on my wet palette and I hope it gives you a clearer idea of the ratios I came up with. I took inspiration from a couple of places, the main one being Andy's Sons of Horus scheme from Cult of Paint. The base coat and shadow colour was quite an important start point for me to get right. I was tempted to shade with black like Andy did, but I did this with two of my major army projects being my Farsa Enclaves and Lawrence's Flesh Terrors. So I chose the Cabalite and German Grey mix to try something different and make my shadows nice and saturated. The mid-tone mix is fairly simple. I used Cabalite and Cyberite Green in the mix to retain the traditional Sons of Horus colour. To finish off this triad, Andy's scheme influenced me the most for deciding the final highlight. I really like the look of the green sky he used, and I think I recreated something similar using a mix. I really enjoy how the Cadian flesh tone in this mix makes it a lot more pastely looking and a fair amount warmer, as I'm not a huge fan of the traditional Cyberite over Cabalite Green for the Sons of Horus, as I think it looks a bit like minty toothpaste. The Age of Darkness box art also has a little influence over this highlight mix. The whole piece has a lot of warmth from the battlefield atmosphere, and I really wanted to incorporate this into my scheme, so that's another reason why I chose Cadian Flesh Tone. With that out of the way, the first base coat is the Cabalite and German Grey mix, and I use my airbrush to thoroughly coat the entire mini. It's very important to make it nice and opaque, so I did about three layers of this paint. Then it's time for the first highlight of the mid-tone of Cabalite and Cyberite. I'm running it through my airbrush at about 35 to 40 psi, and the key here is holding the airbrush close to the model and gently applying the paint with careful trigger control. It's important to go slow with these highlights and not hit the base coat with too much overspray where the shadows are meant to be, as these are what give the lovely green saturation to the scheme. As you can see, we're laying a lot of this colour over the model, but as mentioned, it's really important to preserve the shadows. 
Getting the armour right is one of the most important parts of painting a heresy marine as this main colour does take up so much of the mini. This is why I spent a lot of time creating my paint mixes through trial and error and also through fairly meticulous airbrush work. After that mid-tone is laid down, it's time to apply the final highlight. With this, we want to be even more precise than the previous layer and aim it on the inside of the mid-tone mix. A mistake I always used to make whilst airbrushing was just blasting the colour and obliterating the previous layer. But we really want to retain the three colours in this green to give it a really nice smooth contrast. You might have noticed whilst I've been painting this mini is that I've wanted the light to appear on one side of the model, especially on the head, chest and backpack. I just think it looks really cool so I'm really trying to aim the airbrush on the left side of his face. This airbrushing stage takes a lot less time than the previous one as we're painting in smaller areas but it's really satisfying to see how the three greens work together and as I mentioned the Cadian flesh tone in the final mix really steers the green into this lovely pastel colour. I use this exact airbrushing process across the whole force including on vehicles such as the Spartan and Rhino. Occasionally I would return to the base coat mix as sometimes I'd be too eager spraying the mid-tone and highlight and creating a bit of overspray in the shadows. So I just returned to it with the airbrush and carefully applied it to re-establish the saturation I wanted. So as you can see, the airbrushing stage is now done and that's a really important part ticked off to create our Sons of Horus scheme. I'm also painting up Malagust at the same time and I'm using the exact same colours and steps. After the airbrushing, the next step is to use Vallejo Black to block in anything that isn't our main green armour colour. This stage and the airbrushing stage are probably the most tedious parts of painting the Sons of Horus, but after these bits are done, I find the process really fun. On detailed characters such as Malagust, blocking in black takes absolutely forever, but as well worth it as black is such a great place to start building up colours such as gritty metallics and browns that are basically a trademark of the heresy grim dark style. As I created a nice contrast on the green armour, I thought it would be appropriate to have it on the black shoulder pad as well. So what I'm doing here is using some Tamiya masking tape to basically mask off all the green armour around the black shoulder pad so I could use the airbrush to quickly create a nice gradient. So the first colour I chose to highlight the shoulder pad was Vallejo German Grey and I'm going to cover it over most of the shoulder pads but also the top of the bolter casing as well as it is also a large area of black. The second colour I chose was Vallejo Luftwaffe Uniform and I like this because it has a lot of blue and purple in it. Unfortunately I didn't manage to record that stage for some reason but the highlight after that I'm using that colour mixed with a bit of Vallejo Blue Grey Pale and I'm just aiming this in a smaller area as always on top of the previous highlight. And you can see it doesn't take long but it's a nice quick way to get the gradient we want on the shoulder pad. I also apply these paints by brush to the coil things on his backpack. I'm not using the airbrush as I don't want the overspray to get in between the coils in those recesses and also I really couldn't be bothered to mask off each side of the backpack and the head so I thought it would just be easier to do it by brush. From this point we're just blocking in straight colours so these few steps are nice and quick and the first colour I'm using is Exhaust Manifold by Vallejo and I really like this silver paint because it has a little bit of brown in it and I thought this was appropriate as I'm painting this kind of weathered style. 
You can see why our black undercoat for these metallic bits was so important. It's so we can keep the recesses in black without relying on a wash, which I think is a lot neater and it also makes painting the metallics a lot faster. The next color I'm using is my favorite brown and it's butt number and I'm simply gonna block in all of the leather pouches. I'll then move on to black Templar and this is just to quickly block in the straps on these pouches and then I'll re-establish the silver parts with our exhaust manifold. The next step is pretty optional but I'm returning to my final green highlight mix for the armour and I'm basically going to use the brush to bump up the green highlights. I'm doing it now because I have some other main colours blocked in and it's good at this stage because it's easy to judge how far you can push the highlights. I'm using a combination of layering and glazing to make it fairly smooth and although it is the same colour as the airbrushing step, this paint is way more opaque from the brush so it does make a difference. When I'm happy with this brush highlight and it is fairly opaque, I'm then adding ice yellow into this mix for one final highlight. As always, I'm focusing this highlight in an even smaller area on top of the previous one and you can see I'm using it to exaggerate the highlights on top of the head, on one side of the face and on the green shoulder pad. This brush stage really isn't needed to be honest if you're army painting and I didn't use it on my terminators or tanks in my Sons of Horus army but on these MK6 Marines I think it works really nicely as we have some really nice round small surfaces that the highlighting looks really good on. Now that the base coating is done and the armour is truly done I'm using gloss varnish to seal in all of the colours and it also sets it up nicely for the next few stages. The first one of these is applying some transfers and I'm using the good old faithful microset and microsole to make them nice and flush on the model. I actually bought the Forge World Sons of Horus transfer sheets as I thought some of the red eye designs might look cool across the army but in the end I chose to stick with the plain black symbols that came in the Age of Darkness box set and I'm glad I did in the end because I think they make the Sons of Horus look more crude and menacing. Now it's time to use a black oil wash to define the recesses. I love applying an oil wash over a gloss finish as it runs so smoothly and easily into the cracks. I thin down the oil paint with mineral spirits. For the majority of this painting project and most of the units in my army I actually used an enamel wash and I can tell you that the black oil wash performed so much better on this single mini so I would definitely recommend having the oil instead of an enamel one. You might have noticed that I haven't blocked in the gold studs yet and this was because I wanted to preserve the lovely metallic sheen and not apply a black filter over them. Whereas I wanted this on the silver. I applied it to every recess and then left it to dry a bit around 20 to 30 minutes. Then I come back with some pure mineral spirits and it's simply a case of reactivating unwanted oil stains and then wiping them off. After the oil paint and mineral spirits had dried, I applied a varnish over the model to seal it all in and create the finish I wanted. And I used a mix of AK Ultramat varnish and satin varnish as I wanted the finish to be somewhere in between these. Then it's time to apply the gold metallics and the first paint I'm using is Decayed Metal. I purposefully chose to paint the gold parts after the final varnish in the previous step as I didn't want it to change the lovely gold finish. After that was done, I'm adding a bit of Peridot Alchemy into the mix. I'd say it's about a 50-50 ratio, and I'm going to highlight the decayed metal with this. Then I'm using pure Peridot Alchemy for the final highlight. 
after the gold is finished, it's time for some chipping. And I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of Vallejo Black and Vallejo Burnt Umber. You can see I'm firstly using a bit of torn up sponge to apply this paint. And I'm doing this for speed as I don't want to take forever applying each chip individually by brush. I'm making sure to focus the sponge chipping on the edges of the armor as this is where the most wear and tear would naturally occur. I find that this chipping looks really good on the brightest parts of the armor, but it's really important to not overdo it on these elements. This sets a really nice foundation for the armor chipping, but I do go to the brush because the sponge can't reach some key places that need chipping, like the insides of the bottom of the legs. I also like to use the brush to break up the sponge chipping across the armor, as it can sometimes come out quite uniform as the sponge is the same shape, but with the brush we can add different sizes of chipping that makes it look more credible. I especially like creating specific chips by brush that I know I'll have streaks coming out of in a later step. I love chipping the tanks and contemptor with this technique. There's something really satisfying about building up this weathering slowly. Here I'm repeating the chipping process on the black elements of the model but I'm just using Burnt Umber as it stands out against the black better. After the chipping is done, it's time for a really fun part of the painting, and that's creating some rust streaks using Ammo by Mix streaking effects with some odorless thinner. With this streaking effect product, I find it's the most thick towards the top of the bottle on the inside of the rim, so I'm getting it from there and applying it straight on top of the specific chips I previously made. Then I'll immediately go for my odorless thinner and then basically run it over the chip, pulling it straight down where gravity would take it, and this creates some really natural looking rust effects. I really like the colour of this paint as it has a lot of red in it, which contrasts really well against the green of the armour. I also like to use the more thin mixture straight from the pot and I apply it across the model onto the studs and the recesses and this is similar to the oil paint in where the capillary action makes it flow nicely and I just really enjoy the effect. And that is the model really close to being done but we of course have one of the most important parts left to paint, the eye lenses. And the first colour we're going to use is Mephiston Red. All I'm doing here is getting a nice opaque layer over each lens. And after that's done, we're going to start using a red glaze to create a glow effect. We're still using the Mephiston Red and I thinned it down a lot with water. I'd say 10 parts water, 1 part paint and I'm going to glaze this over and over again starting from beneath the lens and ending the brush stroke within the lens where the paint is deposited. Let each layer dry before applying the next. This is really important as we don't want to rip up layers of paint and by doing this methodically over many careful layers we establish a really nice OSL glow beneath the lenses. After that's done, the hardest part is over and I'm going to block in the lenses again with Evil Sun Scarlet. From there, I'm going to add Ice Yellow into my Evil Sun Scarlet and apply the paint in a smaller area. I'll also apply a really thin edge highlight of this mix below the lens to enhance the OSL effect. Then, I'll move back to the lens itself and keep adding ice yellow and applying the paint in a smaller and smaller area until I reach pure ice yellow in the middle of the lens.
After we've hit pure ice yellow, I'll move to my Scarlet Fluoro paint and I'm gonna fill it out 50-50 of water and glaze it over each eye twice. I really like this fluoro paint as it makes the eyes even more vibrant and to finish them off I'll pick out the centre of each one again with ice yellow. This glowy eyes technique was inspired heavily by Richard Gray's Imperial Fists which he painted for the Age of Darkness box set. I'm really happy I tried this technique on the Sons of Horus as it's something I use really often now when painting marines and anything else to be honest. So that's the marine done, but I thought I'd show you how I do the basing as it ties the whole mini together I think and looks really cool. For the base coat I'm using Tamiya's Flat Earth. For this I'd recommend using the Tamiya Thinner as it doesn't work with normal thinner. And then I'll go to the first highlight which is Vallejo Light Brown and I'm using my airbrush to cover most of the base. Then I'm going to use Carrick Stone and again, I'm going to highlight the base of this over the light brown. The final highlight is some Vallejo Ivory. I'd say use more than this than you think as we're going to filter it later with some washes. Next, we're going to return to some sponge chipping and the colors we're using are Deathwood Forest, Burnt Umber and Black and I'm mixing them in about an equal ratio, but it doesn't really matter. We just need a greeny, browny, grungy sort of color. And I'm using the sponge to create chips on the edges of this base. This basing color scheme I actually got from Meadows Miniatures. So I want to say a big thank you to him for helping me out with it. After the sponge chipping, I'm going to apply an oil wash and we're using two parts burnt umber to one part titanium white to one part lemon yellow hue. I dilute all of these colours as usual with mineral spirits and then apply it liberally across the base. I'm also doing Malagurst's base at the same time as this marine and it's a really good basing scheme to batch paint. I left it to dry about 30 minutes and then I'll come back in with pure mineral spirits and clean up the oil paint where I want the stone to be brightest. Then it's simply a case of removing the marine from our temporary base, cleaning up the feet a little bit and then super gluing him onto the proper one. If you plan on carrying your army around a lot then I'd actually pin it to the base but as it's more of a display army for me I didn't bother. To tie the model to the base, I'm using some light sienna pigments. And firstly, I'm going to thin out these pigments just with a little bit of water on my wet palette. I got really lucky with these pigments as they actually match the base color perfectly. And here you can see I'm just running this mixture into the recesses around the feet. Now you won't see an immediate effect as the mixture needs to dry for the pigments to show up. So what I'll do is use a hairdryer to speed the process up. After I'm done with all of that, I'm going to use some pigments straight from the pot and I'm going to dab them around the feet and lower legs. Make sure you're using a dry brush for the step and don't overdo it. I get asked a lot if I use anything to seal my pigments and the answer is no, I just work it in enough and it will stay put. The final part of painting this MK6 Marine is blocking in the base rim with Vallejo Black. And that is the Marine finished. As this is such a special project for me, I thought I'd indulge a bit and paint a few elements that feature quite a lot across the army, being faces and cloth. And I can't think of a better model to use than Malagurst the Twisted. So, starting with the skin, these are the colours I used to paint Malagurst's head. I'm starting out by base coating their head with a 50-50 mix of silver grey and dwarven skin, which is actually Cadian Flesh Tone for Citadel paints, and I'm using the airbrush again for this stage. 
I like using the airbrush for this as I don't want any dust specks getting caught in the skin and a good way to get a smooth result is an airbrush. From there I'm going to use a mix of Major's Purple, Apocryphary White and Glimmerman Flesh. My thought process for including these colours in this contrast wash was to make the skin more desaturated and lifeless, which I think would be cool for Malagurst. But for a normal skin tone, I'd start with just Gulliman Flesh. So the way I'm applying this is smushing it all over the head and then once it's in every recess, I'll wick away the wash off key areas such as the top of the head and underneath the eyes. I did two coats of this and I diluted each coat with a little bit of water so it flowed nicely and wasn't too strong. After this second layer I applied Maidress Purple and Apocryphary White to the sides of the head as these bits would be more in shadow and I wanted to emphasise the purple hue. After the contrast paint is applied and a foundation for the skin is set I like to hit it with ultra matte varnish as I don't want any parts of the skin to be shiny. From this point it's all about layering and shading so I thought I'd go through all the colours I use now as I tend to go back and forth a lot when painting faces. So I'm using Vallejo Black, Nagaroth Knight, Galvor Black Red, Cadian Flesh Tone, Ice Yellow and Vallejo Silver Grey. My normal process for painting faces is completing the eyes after I've got my foundation of skin as they are the most tricky and fiddly parts to do. So what I'm doing here is using some darker colours on my palette to block in the outline of the eyes. Now I used to use pure black when doing this but I figured out this isn't really realistic unless you want them to look like they've got eyeliner or something. So I like to mix in a bit of colour into this outline. After that's done I'll block in the eyeball with an off white. I'm not using pure white here for the same reason, it's not realistic, so I'm adding in some ice yellow to the colour. I'll turn the head on its side to help me block in the eyeball neatly, and it's worth taking your time to get it nicely inside the outline we made previously. Then it's time for the hardest part, we're blocking in the pupil. Try to get it as neat as you can, but it's okay if you make mistakes because we haven't actually painted the skin yet. So it's actually fine if you get it on surrounding skin as long as the pupil looks okay in the eye itself. A thing I see a lot when people paint eyes is the pupil is too small, but actually if you look at an eye, the pupil is bigger than the white either side. So I really like to make sure that the pupil is wide enough. For the eyes looking the same way, I actually got lucky with this sculpt because Malagos' other eye is so small you can't really tell. But for doing it with a normal head, it's just a case of trial and error. I often make mistakes and have to redo them, but that's just part of the process of painting eyes. A final optional step of painting eyes is painting a small white reflection inside the pupil. It's not essential, but it does look really good if you can manage it. After the eyes are done it gets a little bit easier and as I said before I use all the colours on my palette to create a nice contrast on the skin going back and forth between shade and highlight. Here you can see I'm using a mix of the Galvorback and Nagaroff to shade the sides of his head. I'm also placing it in the recesses above his eyebrows as they are fairly deep and I think the key to painting skin is to use a consistency between glaze and layer. Skin isn't like armour, it's really soft and should be natural looking and the key to doing that is to create smooth and soft transitions. We do this by applying thin layers carefully and building up smoothly over time. You can see here I'm creating my first highlight using the Cadian Ice Yellow and Silver Grey and for the value I'm trying to get it just slightly higher than the contrast foundation as it will be fairly easy to start building up a highlights from there. After I've determined this value through trial and error I'll start building up the highlights starting with the top of the head.
for painting this head, I've tried to leave in as much relevant footage as possible, as I thought it'd be helpful to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. I think describing it only goes so far. Another key area to place this highlight is on the brows and underneath the eyes. As this head sculpt features cracks along one side of his head, in this instance I think it is appropriate to edge highlight these with our first highlight colour. I'm also going to use this highlight to paint forehead wrinkles really subtly and I'll thin down the paint even more with water and apply these layers in a glaze-like consistency. At this point whilst painting Malagurst's head, I was really happy with the contrast I achieved with the skin, but I thought it was too dead looking even for him. So I decided to grab some Trollslet Orange, mix it with Arcadian Flesh Tone and then glaze it over the entire head, just to bring back a little bit of warmth. After I did that, it's time to create our second highlight. So I'm simply adding some ice yellow and silver gray into our first highlight mix to increase the value and then applying it in a smaller area on top of our previous highlight. When painting heads in sub-assemblies, I think it's sometimes important to take a step back and to compare it to where you're gonna stick it on, just to see what you're doing. And I did that at this point, and I thought it needed a bit more warmth on the sides of the head to create some more contrast in temperature. So to do this, I'm using a glaze of Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm placing the pigments on the side of the head and also the recesses on top of the brows. And I really like using this color specifically because for some reason it is super easy to glaze. So that's the face pretty much done. And with all the details blocked in around the head sculpt, you can see it fits with the model nicely. I've skipped forward a bit here as I decided I want to increase the brightness one more time after I glued the head on the model. But I actually regretted this part. I think I went too bright it looks great when you're looking at the model dead on like in this tutorial, but when you're looking at it more from top down, it's just a little bit too white and stands out a bit, but I don't really mind enough to change it. Maybe I will in the future. Here I'm gonna run through quickly one last element that features in my army a lot, which is the cloth, and I'm gonna use Burnt Umber and Carrick Stone. Basically, I block in all my cloth with burnt umber and then I'll gradually add more Carrick Stone in for each successive highlight. To figure out where your highlight should go, I would suggest two approaches. Firstly, is just use reference. I use the box art quite a lot and also just looking at the model from a top-down view. If you do this, the parts you need to highlight might be a bit more obvious to you. Another tip that I think is important for painting cloth such as this is to paint your first couple of highlights in a bigger area than you think you need. When I've done this kind of thing before, I often run out of room and wish I made these highlights bigger.
I actually find painting elements such as this really enjoyable. It's just using two colours, it's nice and simple. As long as you know where your highlights are going and you add the Carrick Stone gradually, it's really satisfying to see it build up until it reaches a pure Carrick Stone. At this point in painting the cloth, I wanted it to pop out just a little bit more, so I'm adding some silver grey into the Carrick Stone and giving it one final highlight on the most pronounced bits of cloth. For the skulls on Malagust and my other characters, I'm actually using the same colour recipe and the way it differs is just the Carrick Stone and Silver Grey cover a larger area. And with those two features covered, I thought I'd show off my finished Malagust. He's definitely my favourite character in my Sons of Horus army and actually the whole range. I just love his pose and the awesome Sons of Horus banner. And so that is the painting done for this video. I'm really happy to say the whole project is now finished and the army is set up nicely now in a dustproof display box, which I'll enjoy looking at in my home office. I really enjoyed chipping away on this project in my personal hobby time over the last year and I'm quite chuffed I managed to get this army done as I paint a lot already as the studio artist for TT and for competition sometimes. As always, if you have any comments, I'll look forward to hearing from you and I'll do my best to answer any questions about painting the Sons of Horus.